CCG Select. If you watch a lot of Pokemon content on YouTube, you've likely heard this name before. Or at the very least, you've seen their most popular box, the Charizard Champion, known for coming with at least one Charizard card of varying value. Make no mistake, CCG Select is a third-party company akin to an MJ Holding company or a Fairfield company. However, they claim to be separate from the pack and the new benchmark in authentic CCG mystery products. So today, we will be taking a deep dive into this Pokemon mystery box company, taking a look at their website, digging into any possible shady practices, and of course, giving them my credit card information. CCG Select. Is it worth it? So to begin, who started the company or what company started said company? This actually took some digging. The only linking companies and or people I could find was a post by Troll and Toad. In this post, Troll and Toad was doing PR for CCG Select saying that they were going to be improving their Charizard Champion boxes. But early into the post, they begin referring to themselves in the first person, which is usually something that you do when you're, you know, referring to yourself. So eventually I decided I want a job at CCG Select. So I went down to the bottom of their website and clicked on careers. And when doing so, you're taken to indeed.com, specifically to the page for Troll X. What the hell is Troll X? Well, to put it simply, they are just another mystery box company. However, in their about section, it says that they are powered by trollandtoad.com. So while they don't outright claim that they are owned by Troll and Toad, Come on. So it seems that Troll and Toad started Troll X to break into or break up the mystery box market. And then from there, Troll X started CCG Select, just basically a way of rebranding some of their products. Or I guess diversifying is the right way to put that. Keep in mind that Troll and Toad is not some small company. They started back in the early days of Magic the Gathering, and according to RocketReach.co, they currently have 91 employees with an estimated revenue of $59 million. Therefore, I will not be giving them the small startup treatment. So the CCG Select website is actually very clean and very appealing to look at, if a little bare bones. The upside to it being bare bones is that they don't have a bunch of different products, so it's not cluttered up. It's pretty easy to get in there and decide what you want to buy. During the time of my investigation, they had 11 items that they were currently offering, two of which were sold out. Now leading up into my actual research into the company, I would come back every couple days and notice that their items were pretty much always on sale. I'd check one item, come back a week later, and it's still on sale for the same price. If you take the Hidden Treasures box, for example, it is listed as $39.99, but on sale for $29.99. But what if we go look on Amazon? Well, this same box is just listed as $29.99. Not a sale, no sale price. According to the CCG Select on Amazon, that is a $30 box, not a $40. So the whole sale thing seems a little shady. You do with that info what you will. Hey, editor man here, a little update on the Amazon pricing. Is a reason that you didn't see the Amazon listing pulled up on uh, that part of the video. So it seems that I made a mistake here. Uh, it was $29.99 when I looked at on Amazon. That's the whole reason that it was written into the script, all of that. But I'm too dumb to get images and stuff at the current time. Uh, up until now, me currently editing, uh, the price is still on sale for $29.99 on their website. However, uh, on Amazon, it's up to $37.99, and if you look at this chart here somewhere, I don't know where I'll put it, you can actually see the price history of this, so it actually never reaches $40, it gets up to $38 or $37.99, um, and you can see that the bottom peaks on this graph are down to $29.99, although it just says $30. So what's interesting is that when I saw it for $29.99, it wasn't listed as a sale price. It was just listed as, as the price. So it was a unlisted price drop and they seem to fluctuate the price up and down. It could be that they're, act they're actually adjusting it with the current market, with how Pokemon cards are going right now, how often they're able to sell these things, yada, yada, yada. But on their website, they don't adjust for the current market, at least in the last like so many months that I've been monitoring them. But let's go on Amazon, they actually do adjust their price, so I was a little off on that. So of their 11 products, I ended up picking up four of them to review. I opted not to do Charizard Champion, I don't recall if it was sold out or not, but either way, it wasn't my goal. That has to be their most publicized box here on YouTube. If you want a good idea as to what comes in the box, what your odds are, all of that, there are plenty of videos for you to go out and watch. Me buying one would not give you a good answer for that. That one is the most hyped up. 
I'm more interested in their variety of products. So the first box is that Hidden Treasures box. However, I didn't actually purchase this. This was a Christmas gift given to me, you know, back when Christmas was still a thing. And that's kind of what kicked me off into wanting to research this company. So keep in mind, they list this thing as $40, but on sale for 30. However, I personally got it for free. CCG Select Hidden Treasures Mystery Box is an adventure into the awesome world of Pokemon trading card game. Why limit yourself to opening a product where you can only pull cards from one given set? This box will include cards, graded cards, packs, and mystery relics from the entire history of Pokemon. We have loaded these boxes with superior selection compared to other mystery boxes on the market. Now, I, I really don't like the wording there, why limit yourself to opening a product where you can only pull cards from one given set. Uh, in, in fact, unless it's a subset, most boxes, we're not talking ETBs or booster boxes, when you're buying like a V box or you're buying a tin, you're not just getting one set. First off, I like getting one set whenever I'm buying a large amount of cards. If I'm buying an Elite Trainer box, I want it to have 10 or 12 or however many of that exact set. That's why I'm buying that ETB. If I want variety, they have the tins, they have the V boxes. So that seems like a weird marketing thing, but I kind of get what they're going for because they're saying that you can get things that are older than Sword and Shield. So according to the listing, it comes with one to three mystery items and or a graded card. So you'll get one to three mystery items or you'll get a graded card, not both. Well, I already opened the products and there's a, just, just keep this part in mind. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it whenever I opened them, but that, that becomes a little interesting. And then it also comes with four random packs, quote unquote, spanning from base set to current sets. So next up, I picked up the power pack, which sells for $17.99 and was on sale for $15.99. This one is basically just like buying bulk. It comes with 50 commons and uncommons from apparently any era of the card game. And then it comes with four hollows and or rares and one ultra rare. Then we have the brilliant box, which retails for $16.99, but was on sale sale for $14.99. This box contains two ultra rare cards and two packs from many eras. If, well, if it's two packs, how is it many eras? It would, at most, it would be two eras. And lastly, I picked up the ultra box for $24.99. Uh, well, actually on, on sale for $19.99. The CCG Select Pokemon Ultra Box is the ultimate way to start building your collection or giving the gift of Pokemon to others. Each box contains a variety of cards from any given set during Pokemon's rich history and is guaranteed to be a wonderful addition to a well-seasoned collector or a beginner. Each box guarantees at least two ultra-rare Pokemon collectible cards. These cards can be from any set, so be on the lookout for those big hit cards. I feel like I'm working for the company now. This is also one of those kind of like bulk card purchases, as this comes with 100 commons and uncommons, well, 100 plus. It comes with eight rares and or hollows, and of course, two ultra rares. The product page also states to be on the lookout for bonus packs and vintage hollows, so that'll be a worthwhile look into. So when accounting for the Hidden Treasures box being a gift and not a thing that I paid for, our total for the Power Pack, Brilliant Box, and Ultra Box was $50.97. There's only one option for shipping, which is three to five day for delivery for $5, which seems about on par for me. I didn't take a note, but I know I remember being surprised by it showing up early. So that either means that it showed up on that three day mark or it had only been two days, and I can't remember which it was. Either way, they either delivered exactly at the earliest date that they said that they would, or even a day early, both of which are fantastic. Now, keep in mind that this company is based out of Kentucky, and I am in Tennessee, we're neighbors. So there's a chance that if you're living out in California or Texas, or I don't know, Maine, is Maine that far away? I guess it's not that far. Your shipping time could be longer. I, I, I can't test that. I can't just send one out to Texas. Actually, I have a friend in Texas. That could be interesting. So as far as checking out, you can only do it with a credit card. They won't take things like PayPal, for example. Now, interestingly, they do use Wix payments as their merchant processor. And to my knowledge, Wix is mostly, we make websites, but they also do merchanting. How do you pronounce that? Merchanting? They're also a merchant. But what's weird is that they don't tell you that they use Wix payments until after you've already given them your money. So in reality, it is a pretty secure transaction. As far as I can tell, Wix seems to be fine. But until you actually submit your money to them, you don't see anything about who their merchant is, about who their payment processor is. It looks like you're just typing in your credit card info to these random people in Kentucky. It, 
I, I, I get that in the end, it's fine, it's secure, it's done through Wix. But it feels weird, because people like me pay attention to that stuff and get sketched out about giving you my credit card info when it looks like you yourselves are processing it without any outside secured company. So again, uh, I, I'm not going to make a promise that you giving them your credit card information is safe. It worked out fine for me, and it's done through Wix. I don't want to get in legal issues if they decide to do something stupid but it should be okay. Oh, I almost forgot. As far as reviews go, uh, they have a Walmart seller page. Uh, at the time of writing this script, they had uh, 4.2 stars out of 5, which seems fine. All right, with all of that out of the way, we are going to go open up all four boxes, see how they sent it to us. Was it well packaged, whatever else? See if everything that was described on the boxes are actually inside, and is it a fair deal? All right, so first off, we have the Hidden Treasures, the one that I keep referring to. And of course, this one came to us as a gift. That's why my name is written on the top. Now, you're gonna notice something a little weird as we look at the other ones as well. See if you guys can point out the interesting thing. So next, we have the actual package. Based on how small this box was, I was concerned that they forgot something. So yes, I did open it, but that's all I did. And no, everything is in here. They're just smaller boxes than what I had assumed, but it makes sense. They're not like, you know, wasting a bunch of packaging. Interestingly, there's no signs of like bubble wrap or anything in here, but based on how well they had these things in there, I, I don't see them getting damaged in shipping. I imagine they're going to have some cases where they're going to use bubble wrap or something similar. But in my case, with the three things I ordered, it was perfect. Like, they don't really need that extra protection. So, they get a pass on that. So then we have the Ultra Box. And this one was, which one again? Yeah, it was basically just buying bulk cards. And it could also have a bonus uh, pack, hollow, whatever else. Oh, it appears I was incorrect on something. Uh, never mind. But anyways, then we have the Brilliant Box. This thing is tiny. It's basically just the size of a deck box. You get two packs in here, two ultra rares. Then, of course, we have the power pack, which is actually the exact same style of box in every way, except it's, you know, different. So I was actually wrong. I don't know why I was thinking that. But yes, these are actually sealed. This has a seal there and a seal there. While this, you'd have to cut the cardboard or peel that off. I thought these were all like unsealed products, but no. However, this one is, and I don't know where it was purchased from. I doubt, I highly doubt it's from their website based on who gifted it to me. It probably came from Walmart or something similar. But it's weird that it's not sealed in any way. So you just kind of have to trust me when I say that I didn't open this. Well, until just now. So, what were our options in here? Because I do see a big boy. I'm guessing we have... Oh, okay. Uh, from Evolutions... We have a PSA 8, uh, 2016 Nitto King Hollow. Uh, interesting note, this is now officially my first ever graded card. I have never gotten cards graded. It's not a thing that I'm into. Uh, I doubt the value is high. On, being 8 isn't too bad, but it's not like it's a 10. But it is a hollow from Evolutions, and Evolutions has definitely gone up in value, so... Might be a good price there. Of course, I'll check the price down there. Normally, it's TCG player price, but as this is graded, I'm gonna have to go off of eBay. Okay, not bad. So the graded cards. See, so yeah, one mystery item, an up, well, one guaranteed mystery item, up to two bonus items. So basically, up to three items on top of the four packs. Uh, so that might have been the only one. So inside, we have an astral radiance. We have a brilliant stars. Good choices so far, but nothing like old. Uh, we have a Silver Tempest, also not a bad set. A Okay, okay, I'll take a celebration. Not bad. I mean, it's, it's you know, only four cards, but that's kind of standard for that. And a Steam Siege. Okay, so it says four packs. I'm guessing that these are the four packs, and this is considered a bonus item, or maybe this is because it's considered Vintage. I wouldn't consider XY Vintage, but man, it's been a long time since I've seen one of those. And I still hear things in here. Uh, thing of Dice, what set are you? I actually don't know that set symbol. Is that like Generations, maybe? Yeah, I do not recognize that set symbol. But hey, some dice that I don't think I have yet. There's still more in here. I think we hit the jackpot on our on this box here. Uh, so we have a coin, and I actually don't think I have this one yet either. It's actually really nice. The Pikachu, Mewtwo, and uh, Charizard there. And 
what the hell is that? We'll look at that in a minute. That's really curious. Uh, but we do have a Blastoise pin here. There we go. Yeah, not too bad looking. It's definitely an official pin. And then, again, something I didn't have. So, <laughs> then what is this? What is this thing? It looks like Necrozma. See that white part right there? This looks like one of his claws. Like it came from a figure that they're supposed to throw in one of these boxes and like a foot broke off or hand. I don't remember the exact shape of that dude. It broke off and ended up in this box. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, I gotta say, I mean, let me zoom this back out. I, you, dice, good size, large, good quality, large coin. We have a pin, a broken foot and a graded card along with an extra pack. So far, this was worth it. So let's actually open these packs. We do have five entirely different sets here. Let's start off with, I'd say, possibly one of the least interesting, although I still love this set, Astral Radiance. It and Silver Tempest to like bottom of the stack with what we got here today though. Nice variety. This box is not bad. Uh, Troll and Toad. You're, you're doing okay. I don't know why you sent me the foot of a Pokemon. Oh, my light. Sorry, my light was off there. Don't know why you sent me the, the, the foot of a Pokemon, but I mean, I guess I'll consider it a bonus item. <laughs> uh, Barboach, Scyther, uh, Eevee, Noctowl, and a Regirock. Now, of course, so I kind of lost my wording there. Um, I'm going to be going through the actual opening process a bit faster than I would in my standard videos. But of course, the actual pulls that we get are going to be, you know, kind of too double edged here because, you know, we're dealing with the standard, you know, pull rates and standard luck that you would get with any other pack. They can't control that. But if we don't get anything, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're weighing packs, but it could also mean that they're weighing packs. Um, it's a really hard thing to tell. I can tell you I kind of looked them over. Nothing looks resealed or anything like that. We pull a Maul Wild V, not bad. But with it being Troll and Toad, I didn't expect these things to have been like resealed or anything sketchy. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, but it's a thing that I'm always going to look for whenever I'm doing these like site reviews because you never really know. Let's, oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, that is correct. I don't remember, it's been a while since I've done celebrations as well. Let's actually destroy this pack here and look at the bottom crimp. Yeah, no signs of glue or anything. We're, we're good. I, like I said, I want to expect that to be the case. Uh, I don't remember how the pack trick works for this. It's only, uh, four cards and wasn't it like two to the back? Like it was a pretty backwards thing? I don't know. I probably mixed it all up and I did. We have our classic collection on the front now. Oh, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to swap the back two. That was it. But hey, we have a Cleffa. Uh, of course, we have a Cosmog in that restroom. Then we have a Hollow Mew. Hollows are guaranteed. But we actually got a pull from the classic collection. Uh, it's a pull I already have, but okay, not bad. More signs that they don't weigh things. Like I said, I wouldn't expect them to, but it's always going to be a really hard thing in the Pokemon community, in any card game, really, where... You know, people can say that they don't weigh things, but you, they can't prove that. Like in my case, the only scale I have in my house is one meant for people. I don't have a way of weighing these. But how can you believe the sentence that I just said to you? Do you live here? Do you visit my house often? Like, you don't actually know if I'm weighing them or not. There's no evidence that can be left behind. Aside from math. All right, last pack, Steam Siege. Might be a little bit slower on this one. This this set wasn't one that like stood out to me. It wasn't like a big favorite of mine, but uh, it, it's still nice to get X and Y after this long. I'm not like a big vintage kind of person. X, Y, so there's no energy if I remember correctly. So we have a Persian, Greedy Dice, Monferno, Rufflet, Larvesta, Joltik, Tangela, the Ponyard, Avalug as a reverse. God, I miss these reverses. And on the end, a Weavile. So, no good pulls out of that little uh, vintage pack, but hey, not, not bad. I'm happy to have had it. So this one is honestly probably going to be the most boring of our options here, the Power Pack. It's just 50 commons and uncommons, four hollows and or rares, which, God, that sucks, and one ultra rare. So we have a good shot for one actual good card in this thing. The rest are probably gonna be trash unless there's some like more vintage things in here. But again, I don't remember how much the price of this was. I will show it again on screen now that I'm mentioning it. 
but it was probably, you know, we're probably going to get what we paid for on this. I'm not expecting much based on value. Um, so, yeah, oh, double coughing, that's a little disappointing. Yeah, you're only doing 50 commons and uncommons, you could at least not do duplicates. Like, duplicates aren't a big deal, but the people trying to basically just buy bulk to pad out their collection, duplicates are kinda lame. Uh, it, it's so many as well, like two Misty's Determinations. The, kinda lame to do that, I don't know why I'm having to flip these upside down, that shouldn't have been a thing. Two Larvestas, another Pokemon Center lady. Hop Hip, Petalil, two Dweebs, two Crustle. It feels very much like they're cheaping out here, and the fact I'm having to flip them as well. Just flip your cards, man. Make the actual opening experience good. I don't need more Pokemon Go cards. You can stop giving me those. Um, way, way too many with that very small set. Uh, a bunch of Sableye. So yeah, nothing like... Okay, and there's our good card. We have a Drapion V. Um, I'm gonna guess that it's probably around a 20 cent card, but you guys will see it down there. Um, well... I don't know, maybe, maybe around like 50, but I do already have them. Not really a valuable thing to have in here. Um, so for the four hollows and or rares, we did get a hollow stone energy, uh, hollow, they're reverse, a reverse sparrow, a reverse woobat, and a reverse dreadnaw. So no actual hollows, which is the standard that you get with these things. Uh, uh, this is more of a personal take here, but when they're saying that they're trying to stand above the rest, then don't do the same shady things that the other companies are doing. When you say four hollows and or rares, don't make them all reverses. I get that is technically a hollow, but they know what they're doing. The standard like child or person buying this is going to see that and think the hollow effect will be here and not here. The word hollow in most people's brain triggers hollow. So they know what they're doing. They're not stupid. It's a marketing trick. But it's the same marketing trick that we see from MJ Holding Company, that we see from, oh uh, god, what's the other one? Fairfield. I'm, I'm liking what we're seeing so far, but that's a little not standing out above the rest. Alright, so next up is the Ultra Box. 100 commons on commons, 8 hollow slash rares, 2 ultra rares, and possibly bonus packs and all that fun stuff. I'm just not gonna have to break the seal this way because I don't have a knife on me, which is just the standard for this channel anymore. Uh, not seeing any bonus packs. This looks like a big old thing of cards. Oh, that's interesting. That is an actual card right there that's kind of being held in. Well, look at that last. You know, like those like kids toys from McDonald's and all that? It feels exactly like that, like that exact type of wrapping on this thing. Um, all right, I did see something nice on the front there. So I'm going to assume if we just take off the front like stack and then go through, we'll probably have like most of our boring stuff out of the way. Let's you know, set some of that down. My hands aren't that big. And we're going to go through this pretty quickly, just looking for, oh my god, they're doing the upside down thing. Look, I, I get that it, realistically, it doesn't make a big difference, but it's it's about the customer experience. It's one of the reasons, like, whenever you buy a cell phone or most electronic devices, um, most of the time, they'll have it charged up. They'll make sure that the battery at least has some charge on it. And it's not because it really matters. If you buy that cell phone, you're going to be charging it eventually anyways. But it's about the customer experience. It makes them want to come back. It's a minor thing that they won't think about, but they will think about it when they're used to that being the norm, that the phones that they've bought in the past have been charged, that they're, they're going to remember the fact that this one wasn't, as opposed to if it is charged, they're not really gonna think a whole lot of it. It's the same thing with this. If all of these cards were straight, you know, up the way that they should be, I probably would not have thought about it. I wouldn't have appreciated the fact that they did it. But the fact that they don't do it hurts. It's a thing that I'm going to remember. We got some evolutions in here, that's nice. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just gonna be a common, but I mean, evolutions. Like, I know I'm being nitpicky here. It really doesn't matter, but it's a weird thing, like, to not do. It doesn't take much time at all. You just only do it that entire stack while actually looking at the cards and going through them, looking for standouts. And I was able to do it that fast. Like, it doesn't take much effort, but it improves the customer experience. And if it feels more premium to the customer, you know, just the small attention to detail, the cards are flipped the right way. 
it makes them appreciate the product more and more likely to come back. Um, but again, being nitpicky, there's my boy. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done trying to correct their mistake. I'm just going to let them stay upside down. Uh, we are getting some older cards and stuff in here, but nothing like... You know, we're not talking like vintage, we're just talking a bit older. All right, so I know we got at least one shiny thing on the front of this, so we're actually gonna do this the weird way. We're gonna start pulling away from the back um, until we see, okay, there we go, there's a shiny. So we have a Hypno as a reverse, a Tangela reverse, a Swepa reverse. Those will be two ultra rares in here and eight uh, hollows slash rares, but I'm not seeing what most people would consider to be a hollow as of yet. Bit older clay doll there, okay. Uh, we have an Evolutions Haunter. Again, Evolutions is a nice thing to have. The, yeah, okay, so they went down to just a standard rare. If you ever see these cards and you're like newer to the card game, they're not worth much more, in most cases, not any more than most of your standard cards. I like them, they're kind of cool, but if you're going for value, they're not that great. Uh, then we do have one of our Ultra Rares here, the Grap Locked V and the Double V. Both very common cards. In fact, this is actually a promo from a Double Box. Um, while this is just the, it's just the V, it's fine. All right, let's take this card out. Uh, okay, we do it this way. And while wow, they really do just kind of hide it from you. Let's just kind of, there we go. And wow, okay, this one is actually a bit beat up, which sounds like a bad thing, and it is. There's a lot of whitening down there. Not too sure exactly how well it's showing, but that could be a sign of an older card. It's an energy. It is a 2007 beat up crap. Thanks, CCG Select. Uh, I figured that I probably should. I went ahead and counted. Uh, there were actually 104 common slash uncommons in here if you include the energy 103 if you didn't so they went over the mark and on this guy there were exactly 50 commons commons and uncommons all right on to our last box we have the uh brilliant box two packs and two ultra rare cards i don't think this one includes a chance for anything else but it could include a nice choice of pack in here so, our first pack. Wow, okay, I'm happy with it. We have a Shining Fates. Again, not anything like vintage or crazy, but I love Shining Fates. I'm happy to do another one of those. And we have a Brilliant Stars. It's called the Brilliant Box. Nah, we have a Lost Origin. Uh, then the cards, the two cards that they decided to include. Ultra Rare Cards. We have a Promo Infernate V straight from the Infernate V box. Exciting. And then we have the Pidgeot V. Okay, not bad. You know, it's just, again, it's just a standard V, but at least it's not a promo. So it could just be my luck, but uh, what it seems like they qualify as ultra rare while technically fitting the mark. It uh, seems to be just, again, a lot like, you know, Fairfield Company and uh, the other one. I, I, I'm so bad with my names. MJ Holding Company. It seems to be pretty much on par with those when it comes to what you actually get inside. I don't know. I mean, that first box had so many, like, nice extras that I, I'm actually thinking, uh, out of all of the, th the the big three, if we're including the CCG Select as the big three, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Okay, we got a hollow there. That's nice to have. I actually recently pulled the, uh, the purple one, uh, Spectre, I believe it's called. And then we have the Shining Fates. I still love this set. It is fantastic. So, I mean... The, granted, the first box was free to me because it was a gift, but I can't remember. Are there energy? Yes, there is. Um, oh, then why didn't I take it out? I'm stupid. Um, because the box, first box being free is kind of hard to say. Based on the $50 I've spent, I don't think it would have been worth $50 to me personally. But if I wanted to do like more mystery box stuff for you guys on the channel, this might be a decent company to return to and a standard boss's orders. So I'd say out of all of this, I'm probably the most happy with uh, obviously our first box right here. Um, if I can suggest any of these, it's probably going to be that, but of course it was the most expensive. Uh, of course we had the brilliant box, we had the power pack, and we had the ultra box. These boxes, this one and the power pack, where the main feature is basically just buying bulk, I can't suggest because I mean, it's, 
you're it's exactly what it says you're buying bulk they're ha they're again i don't buy bulk i did once from tcg player do a video on it but the, i'm fairly certain there are better white ways to buy bulk crap out there i mean yeah with this you have a chance at getting a bonus but they're still getting their, their money's worth out of you i don't think that these are worth it unless you just want to try your luck and have a little bit of a good fun time. I feel like these two are much more worth your money because you're actually getting sealed things from the Pokemon Company. You don't know what you're going to get, but nor did CCG Select know what they were giving you. They're giving you these packs, right? And it could be a good deal. They could be giving you, I, I don't know, four Battle Styles packs. And nobody, or at least I don't like Battle Styles, but I could still get amazing pulls out of those. Or they could give you three, you know, uh, this is the one I should probably be holding up. They could be giving you like three standard packs and then one like Steam Siege, and then you don't get a whole lot. I feel like there's more possibility for good things out of the ones where the primary thing are, you know, getting packs. All in all, though, um, I always go into these things very skeptical. Uh, I, I, I do think that there is room for improvement on these products. Uh, again, maybe not this one. This one's nice. <laughs> but on these products, there is some room for improvement. But, I mean, they aren't bad. Of course, my favorite thing from today was getting my first ever graded card. Um, I considered picking some of these up, but it's just, it just never been a big interest to me. It feels too scammy to me. I get why people are into it. It's just not for me. But now I can say I actually own one, and it's not bad. It's a nice little evolutions card here. So like I said there at the end, th this feels like a good option. Do I think that it's above Fairfield and... MJ Holding Company, yes, but from this limited experience, only four items, it, it doesn't seem like by much. Both of those companies are well known for just trying to sell you the thing and not caring that much about what you actually get, which is kind of the goal. They have to make money somehow. They can't have every box. I, I don't understand people who buy these mystery boxes and expect like a hundred dollar card in every one and get disappointed when what they get is worth less than what they paid. When you buy one of these, the chances are what you're getting out of it is not what you paid for it. And this is coming from the manufacturer. Companies have to make money, so I get it. You're not gonna get hits every single time. That's kind of the point. But they definitely did seem to be a bit more quality. Everything that was listed on the boxes came inside, which is not always in my experience with the other big two. The pricing honestly wasn't bad, seeing as I paid $50 for three of those boxes. Again, I don't, I don't think that's something that I would pay for again, but that's just me personally, especially when it comes to bulk stuff. I mostly did that because I was interested to see what they would put in there. Not really so much because I really wanted it. So I guess that's about it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that after watching this video, you would buy from them, whether it's from their website or online, or even possibly just finding them in store? Or do you think that after watching this, it's gonna be one of those things that you avoid, or maybe you put it on the same level as the other mystery box companies, and it's just gonna be, you'll pick it up as often as you do those. And if you had any experience with this company before, whether you bought one of their boxes, you know, online, from their website, wherever else, let me know that as well. I'm interested to know if you've had any issues where it didn't come with the things that it said, or maybe you had a super amazing pull inside of one of those boxes. Either way, thank you guys very much for watching, and please leave a comment down below. If you have another website, it doesn't have the mystery box thing. Last time I tackled... What was it called again? Last time I did a video on Game Nerds, which is a bit more of a traditional card site, so if you can go check out that video. But I'm always interested in finding more and more of these third-party sellers to look into. So if there's any that you're curious about, any that you've used in the past, whether it was good or bad, let me know down below if you want to see an investigation into it. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye for now.